Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Platinum 2 Protoss. Oh my god, me. Oh my god. Guys, in today, today's video, uh, so the ladder just reset. This is why we're unranked at the moment. I hope it doesn't fuck up our MMR. Well, I have no idea nowadays with uh, Blizzard. We'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, there's been a lot of oh, MMR bugs lately. Yeah. Uh, like ladder bugs. Let's hope it doesn't. Give me a P, give me a R, give me a, give me a toss. Toss me. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Zal Zalabar. Much love, man, for the five. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope I hope it works well. well. We'll see what happens after this first game. But we're doing everything we've been doing before. <clears throat> trying to hit that 930 max. We're trying to... Um, Keep everything flowing well with our build. Uh, make sure everything's running well and, you know. We're also doing the pre-split fight engagement things. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what our goal is, boys. We're going to do a bit of a scout read at the start of the game and try to figure out what our opponent's doing. <laughs> also... Uh, I'm trying to remember everything I said I was going to do before. I feel like I might be forgetting something, but uh, we're going to start doing a little bit more mid-game. Got to plat one for the first time. Thanks for all the help, Vibu. Thank you, Chogler. Much love for the 100 biddies, dude, and congrats. Congrats on your platinum promo. Uh, we're going to be going into a little bit of mid-game scouting as well with like our uh, sentry action, just to make sure we know what's going on. We see a Terran that walled off. You want to know something cool, too? A cool tip here, guys? Check this out. Look at that, Rax. That Rax is building nothing, by the way. How can you tell that? Because it has nothing lighting up in the barracks. There's no lights flashing, which means he's not making units right now. But I do see another barracks, so it is going to be aggressive. Very interesting. How are we going to react to this? Let's just make a shield battery. Thanks for getting me back into SC2, friendo. Hell yeah. Thank you for getting back in the game. Uh, belch a lot. Much love, dude. Hope you're having a good time. My man. Okay. Let's go ahead and get my stalker going. We're gonna. Oh yeah, I, I, we're gonna start kind of boosting our stalker now as well. Every game. Uh, we're not gonna really use it too much. Because again, we're platinum right now. But we will eventually start using it. But for now, we're gonna start adding in Chrono Boost to our build. To just kind out the first stalker to get our unit out a little bit quicker. Let's get a quick battery. Because our opponent looks very aggressive, potentially. Like, uh, that was some aggressive looking crap. Multi racks, no expansion, but he wasn't making units, which is weird. So, like, the fact that he's not making units, if we want to break this down in a logical way. If he's not making units, it's very weird that he's going to make more racks to not make units. Because he's going to make barracks units. Like, th his goal is to make units out of the barracks if he's making more than one barracks. And if he's not making units, the only real reasoning I feel like there might be is he's either going for a lot of uh, barracks all at once and then he's going to flood marines and SCVs behind it. And he's just, like, not making units but instead prioritizing buildings first. Which, again, is a form of inefficiency. Or maybe he's going for, like, delayed gas with reapers and he's going to try to do... Like this weird build where he makes like a few racks first and then goes double gas later. Which again is another form of inefficiency. Ne ne no matter what, uh, no matter what way the cookie crumbles here, it's inefficient because he's making racks and not making units. Can you talk about Protoss early building placement? Uh, yeah, all you gotta do is, uh, that sucks dick. Uh, don't do so. He's going the marine style. Uh, let me focus on this first and we'll talk about it after. Okay, so he's attacking me. Let's go ahead and overcharge our battery. Let's go ahead and also bring our sentry or probes forward and A-move them. If he gets out of battery range, just go back to the mineral lane. Keep making units. Keep making probes. We can chill at the battery. We can make another pylon. Don't go out there. Notice how I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go expand again. Oh, I really can't. He's still in my way. Okay, pull the probes again. Probes go. Okay, let's do something clever. Let's have the battery heal the pylon. Okay, well, it's dead. And uh, now we can send the probes back. We can build another pylon. Keep building units. Pull my stalkers back to the battery. 
Make another immortal because they're getting all in right now. GG. All right. So, to tell you about building placement, okay? This is terrible. I did not mean to build like that. I don't know why the fuck I built like that. It's really bad. And here's why it's bad. And anyone out there who's like, why? Please explain why is this is bad. I don't get it. What do you mean? Why does that suck ass? Because a Reaper can jump like this up the hill and go like that. And there's nothing stopping him from taking a full lap around my base. Like he can do circles around my base if he wanted to. So instead of this being here like this, I don't know why I built it there. It should be here like this. So what does that do now? It means the Reaper, every time he comes into my mineral line, if he goes in the center of my mineral line, my probes could do a citizen's arrest and catch his ass. Like if I just grab my probes and go a move in the area where if the Reaper tries to run through it, if I decide I want to do that, or the barracks or the pylon in the gateway and the core could block the side of the mineral patch to the wall here. So the Reaper can't actually go behind, which allows my stalker to chase the Reaper down and corner him and then kill him. So this is a stupid fucking wall. This is a bad wall. I don't, I did not mean to build it this way. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, for some reason, I started this game off thinking this was a Zerg player. And my probe is like over here. And then I checked the races and I was like, oh, it's Terran. And I ran back and I just built a pylon and then my wall sucked. Uh, so it is what it is. It's okay. But yeah, that's why you build a wall. Now, remember how I told you guys how you can do anything you want efficiently and it will beat anything done inefficiently? Again, now we're going to take a little bit of a more advanced scout here, okay? We're, we saw more and I explained it, right? We're watching for lights flashing on the building. He walled me out. First time. Look at that barracks. Look look at the barracks. Look at the lights specifically, on the, the white lights here on the barracks. Watch the lights. They're doing nothing, right? And then I go back because we talk about it and we check it again. Still doing nothing. And then I go, and then here's a cool trick you can do too. You can hug the edge of the wall here. You can like hump the barracks and depot basically in the corner here. And get, tuck yourself in there as tight as you can. <laughs> and you can see as much vision radius as you can into his base. And you might you might see something else that he's doing. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. Seeing that what this is right here, there's one thing this really seems like it would be against Protoss. Or it, not even against Protoss, just in general. There's one build I feel like I'm thinking this already is. And I feel like this would be a, a player who would be going for a very, very fast double gas. And then they're going to go for a really fast factory and possibly like a really fast starport. And they're going to cut every corner possible by doing something like, for instance, not using any minerals to get marines or defense. And he's like going to hope to God I don't somehow attack him. Like, that's what would make sense, you would think. The only way you could do something that would make sense. Because if he's going to make barracks units, why the fuck is he not making barracks units? Like, how are you going to make a barracks push and then not make units out of your barracks? Makes no sense. Makes your push so much weaker. What that All that does, all that proves, is that if I had to get in the mind of my opponent, it's like this. I'm going to surprise him by metaing him and making him think I'm not doing a barracks push. But I'm really doing a barracks push. And then I pat that guy on the head and I'm like, oh, that's cute. But let me tell you something. Inefficiency doesn't beat efficiency. So you can meta me all fucking day and you'll never win if you don't do efficient things. Like build multiple barracks and don't build out of them for a while. Thinking, making me think you're not going for barracks units when you are. So when you show up to my base, I have more than enough to crush you. So we saw another barracks and we're like, okay, yeah. Uh, he's building nothing out of the barracks still. And he's making multiple barracks. And now watch, watch what the barracks look, looks like when it starts building a unit out of the barracks. Watch what it looks like. It will start flashing in a second here. Watch the lights on the barracks. Watch the lights on the barracks. <laughs> He's still not making anything. There we go. Now see how the lights are flashing. So he he started making marines when I already have my core basically done. That is so ridiculously late. 
Because not not even that, not even the fact that when it's my when my core is almost done, I didn't even go core right after gateway. I went fucking nexus after gateway, and then I went core. This is so inefficient of a build. This is this is an all in, hundred percent. This is an all in, and it will never work because it's not efficient. I'm not saying that five racks would never work. It might. But if you do it like this, where you try and like meta your opponent by being like, I'm not going to build anything for 38 seconds after, or 45 seconds after my barracks done, then I'll start building Marines. Yeah, good, good luck. You're, you're going to be, you're going to be having an army that's like five Marines less than what you could have if you just don't do it on multiple barracks or something. <coughs> and if your push is done with like 12 Marines or like 17 Marines or something, that's a big difference. <coughs> Look what he pushes with. He pushes with. 13 Marines. No, 12 Marines. He leaves the other one there. This is 12 Marines leading the charge right now. What if this was 17? Could be a lot scarier. Meanwhile, more Marines are popping out of the racks the entire time. <laughs> and then our hallucinated Phoenix died. It's all good. And then now all we got to do here, all we do here is we overcharge our battery. And we A move and we go, that's a lot of Marines. It could it could have been even more, but that's a lot of Marines. So what do we do? Just A move my fucking probes at it. Because here's the here's the truth. Here's the reality of the situation. Even if all these probes die, every if every one of these probes on my natural dies, I'm still ahead. Because I can make probes during the fight off of two Nexus, whereas he's not making SCVs off of one command center because he's got enough SCVs for one mineral line and he's he's done. He's never making SCVs anymore. Which is why the worker count right now is seventeen to thirty seven. I can lose, uh, what is this, 15 probes and still be at 22 over his 17. Again, I'm still making probes at the same time as well. So it's not even like I'm going to be stuck at 22 either. And the time it would take me to lose 15 probes and go down to 22, I'd probably be back up to like 26 because I'm making more during the fight. And then it would once again be 26 probes versus 17 SCVs. Not good for Terran. Came back to SC2 after 10 years. Got to Diamond as Zerg and Platt as Protoss thanks to B2GM. Love the content. Hell yeah. No, thank you very much. Uh, Anticromulant. Thank you fucking for the 50, man. My God, bro. You're too nice. And congratulations on the success with Protoss and Zerg, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but yeah, it, like we're more than able, we're more than happy to lose our probes here. We're more than hit. we're happy to lose our probes here because as well at the same time we're also making immortals and stalkers, which means we're gonna outproduce his bio. So he shows up and we just overcharge the battery. And look how good this thing is. And then we move our probes. He starts running away. He kills a couple probes because our probes get. Also, the 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 radius of a battery is about like that big. It's not indefinite range, guys. It's it's about like. The same range as like a stalker's attack range. It's like six or five. It's not too long. Uh, but because we're getting far away and our, our probes are getting kited to death now, just go turn around. Fuck it. Because you want to know what's happening? The whole time the probes are taking damage for us, we're shooting his marines with stalkers and the sentries. Like we're more than happy to just pepper damage into his army right now. Like look, look at this. His army is just getting fucking roasted right now. And then now we have Immortals coming out. And then he comes in again and he goes for the pylon this time. And all we, all, like one thing we can do this time is we, if we just grab the battery and see that he's targeting. This is why we like to use health bars on always. And we can clearly see the health bar on the pylon getting attacked right now. The health bar on the pylon starts going, starts going down, right? So if we just take the battery, hit the hotkey for the restorer, and then... Like, if you use grid, it'll be different than R, by the way. It'll be, like, Q for grid, R for non-grid. Uh, but you get the point. It's just hit, use the use the hockey or click it. I would say probably don't click it. Probably try to use the hockey. Hockeys are way better, more time efficient. Uh, but if you just tell your battery physically to heal the pylon, you counter his damage. And now what happens is my pylon takes a bunch of damage while I'm just killing his fucking marines. And we started doing it really late. Uh, we're not trying to play flawless here, but you, that's a good idea. And he actually loses, uh, he gets shot like twice more while trying to kill the pylon. And then our second pylon actually finishes down there. So our, our, uh, 
our battery's up again anyways. It's all good. And now look at the look at the supply, right? We're now starting to get to a point where we're starting to surpass him. Our third base is also ready to go down right now. And everything is looking juicy, juicy, juicy. And then, yeah. Oh, there you go, boys. Nice. Nice. Efficiency beats on efficiency, once again. That's the rule of everything. Hey, Vibe, could you please explain your macro sequence cycle on your keyboard? Thank you and much love, meow. Okay. Uh, yo, thank you, uh, Dust Bunny Migration for the dollar. Uh, can you explain your macro si sequence cycle on your keyboard? It's four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five. That's literally it. I, I was, if you want to know that, I highly recommend you go back and watch the bronze videos. Bronze and silver stuff. Maybe some, like, just work your way up through it again. Don't. Big tip for anyone out there listening right now. If what we're doing is already too advanced and you're like, okay, this is going faster for me that I, and I don't really know what's going on. I want it to be more broken down in a more basic way. I highly recommend you give it a chance and go back and watch the bronze videos. Even if you yourself are in like platinum league. Trust me. It will still be relevant information to someone in Platinum if you watch a bronze video that I made. 100%. If you're in Masters, it's still relevant for you to watch a bronze video. Because if you have horrible macro fundamentals, which is very possible, it will be worth your time to oh, yeah. learn what good fundamentals are. Uh, yo, Fruit Seller, thank two you for the... Two years, big dog. Thank you, Fruit Seller, for the two years, dude. Much love, man. Yeah, okay, so don't worry about the bronze one graphic, guys. Uh, because this is what really matters. Bronze 1 is not 2900 MMR. So what we need to hit... Uh, uh, fuck, I can't remember what my Terran's MMR is. <sighs> Shit. Can someone... Yo, someone in chat, can you guys link me the uh, promo MMR ranges? And I'll just go for that. I can't remember what mine is. But I'll just keep going with, this, with the video as is normal. I think it's like 3,080. What was my video yesterday? What did I hit? Or like not yesterday, but the day before. What did I hit in the Terran video? Fuck. I can't remember now. I'm going to go look it up myself right now while I'm in the middle of a game. <sighs> okay. We're against the Zerg player. Nice. Let's go ahead and saturate our gas or saturate our close mineral patches. We, we did it. We good. Welcome back to Bronze League. Yeah, right. MMR so f or the the league placement shit so fucked up in this game right now. Oh my god, Blizzard. Moist. Moist. I could have bought that so far has beat the medium AI. Nice, dude. Nice, that's cool. 3026 is plat 1, if I'm not mistaken. Get coins at rally.io. Fuck, dude. Ethereum, what the fuck, bro? You just bought 10,000 Bible coins. Jesus. The <laughs> fuck? Oh my god. Ethereum, you're an animal. You're a, you're a crypto millionaire. Yeah, guys, actually, something big, in props of Ethereum just buying 10,000 Bible coin for himself. Ethereum, thank you so fucking much for doing that, dude. You're a goddamn boss. Uh, if you guys actually go to my chat and type that in right there, coin, uh, exclamation point coin, it'll link you to my, uh, my personal crypto, my, my content creator cryptocurrency, and, uh, it's actually pretty cool, like, 
We use it for fun events and stuff like that, that we do on the stream every now and again. Like, free-for-alls and shit like that. <laughs> but, uh... If you guys actually buy it and you hold it, you get these things that are weekly rewards and you can actually, um, make actual money just by holding the coin. Yo, thank you very much, Ethereum. Oh my fucking god. You're a boss. Jay's Louise. What's Vibe Coin worth in USD? Right now it's worth like $3 a, a coin. Or, uh, sorry, it's worth like, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alright, let's kind of boost our Nexus. Get our base walled off. Zerg didn't look too aggressive when we scouted him. <laughs> also, this is another one right here. If you guys want to, if you guys actually really go, went to my channel and type that. That's another one right there. If you do Vibu coin, all one word as well, it actually gives you an information uh, panel about what it actually, that gives you like, uh, the bot will tell you kind of what's going on. But it's done off a website called rally.io. It's pretty sick. Ethereum, much love, dude. Yeah, I don't know if you're watching the stream or not right now, but thank you so fucking much for, the, uh, for doing that. You're a boss. Jesus. Okay, let's go and take our third base. It's six dollars right now? Is it? Dude, it's fucking exploding. Last I literally checked it two days ago and it was three dollars. It was three. Okay. Fucking nuts. Alright, uh let's go ahead and get an observer. <coughs> Keep kind of boosting out my probes. Keep making stalkers. Let's... Oh, super lag. Okay, let's check what's going on here, right? So we see zerglings. We see queens. For all we know, this could be Mutalisk, guys. We don't actually know what this is yet. This could definitely be queens. Oh, yeah, sorry. This could definitely be mutas. It doesn't guarantee that it is, but it definitely could be. But because it's zerglings, let's get this base wall off a bit faster. Uh... I mean, it's, it's something that is going to be kind of scary. We don't, we don't want to get run over without being able to really handle it. Camera hockey chronos, like a boss. Like a motherfucking boss. Let's go ahead and get our uh, upgrades going now, because we have good upgrades. Are we, so we have good economy, so let's get our upgrades going. Let's go ahead and get another uh, scout out. Our sentry should have enough energy. Let's, this time, let's do the right side. And let's see if he's expanded on the right side of the map at all. Okay, he's attacking my third, it looks like, so let's go defend that. Reinforce it with my army. Okay, we see Hydras. Uh, he just attacked me with a Hydra, right? So now I know it's going to be ground, which is, it's fine. Either way, it's fine. It's just having an idea of what's coming is kind of important. And now we do. We can re-rally our probes to our fourth base. Make an immortal. And now we can start making Zealots and Archons. We can start boosting our upgrades as well. Because we ha now we have a council on the way. Or uh, an archives on the way to make our big boys with. Alright, my phoenix expired. It died. It didn't actually scout anything on the right side, so we'll have to do another scout in a minute. Let's get a couple more pylons in my base. Keep making ze zealots and keep making probes. We can keep chrono boosting our upgrades. Mm -hmm. We can start making archons. Because we are at... Uh so he... Uh, someone's asking... He bought 10,000 and he didn't donate 10,000? Yes. He bought $10,000 worth of Vibu coin, 
which increases the value of Ibercoin for everybody because it increases the power of the coin because it's more backing behind it. But yeah, he didn't donate me 10 grand. He, uh, but he did increase my coins holding though because it's a fucking lot of coin. So he, he made everyone who holds Vibacoin volume go up a bit. And crypto is volatile as fuck. It goes up and down like crazy. It fluctuates like hardcore. Ethereum, you're a boss though. Thank you very much for doing that, man, if you're listening. Crypt Ethereum is a big boy. All right, let's get armor and weapons again. Let's do another scout on the right side of the map. Let's get some more gateways. Be very careful against Zerg as well. Don't make Archons on the inside of your base. Because if you do, they can't get out. And if you do make Archons inside your base and they can't get out, you can always kill a gateway. That's also fine. Get coins at rally.io. Yo, Rally user, thank you very much for buying some Viba coin. Much love, dude. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. Okay. Uh, and we're about to max out here pretty soon, guys. Super close. Let's get these uh, buildings set up over here. Let's also get another expansion going because we're now fully saturated. So let's expand over here. So again, we're just macroing, right? And now we're using rapid fire as well. As you guys saw earlier in the platinum video, we can now rapid fire it up. Transfer some extra oversaturated probes. Put some probes on the gases. We can make a few more gates to go up to like maybe like 22 gates or something. Or like 21 gates or 20 gates and a robo. We actually need a second robo. Cool. And now we, we got a super happy, super good amount of units. Very, very nice. Very nice. And we can do one more scout now on the left side of the map. Just before we're about to go take our engagement or attack. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so we got our army set up. Grab my army. Take out the Phoenix so we don't disrupt it. And let's get my army going up to the middle of the map right now. Chrono boost our upgrades. And now we see a base there as well. So we know Zerg is fucking everywhere right now. So now, okay, he's attacking us. So if he's attacking us, just attack right into him. It's fine. And if he, if he runs away, okay, so he's, he's running away. Just group up your army. Group your shit up. He's coming back. Okay, I move him again. It, it, it seems like this guy wants to do the same back and forth with you all day. Fuck it. Just go back to macroing instead then. So rapid fire out some zealots. Chrono boost out our upgrades. Chrono boost out our immortals. So like what I want you to do, if you can, is I want you to take a good initiated fight. But if your opponent's going to just run away from you constantly, it's going to take you longer to get that set up. And if it takes you too long, just fuck it and just go. Get coins at rally.io. Thank you, JD Band. Thank you very much for the 52. Okay. Let's go ahead and make our next round of units. Okay, we can make zealots as well. We can make some immortals. Make a bunch of archons. Chrono booster upgrades. Chrono booster immortals. And notice how we're maxed again. It is very nice. All right, this time we'll try and set up a fight uh, simply because our opponent, uh, we kind of washed each other's armies off right there. So both of our armies kind of died off. So this time let's let's go for a bit of a better engage. Let's A move like right here. And then green box like half my army. Get coins at rally.io. Right half my army goes up here. And now what we're going to do is we're now going to A move this base. Shift a move that base, shift a move that base, and then that base. We can take our observer and have it follow an immortal. And then go right back again to what we were doing before, where we chrono boost out new units. New immortals get chrono boosted, new upgrades get chrono boosted. We make rapid fire zealots, and so on and so on and so on. And if I ever get to a point where I, my gateways are on cooldown and I start having extra money, we can start adding on some defense in our base, like some static D. But right now, we're barely able to spend our money because this guy and I are... We're both deleting each other fucking constantly in this game. Like, both of our enemies are just constantly dying. Okay, he's dead. Alright. 
So going back, and again, like having having a static D is super nice. It is super nice, but it doesn't replace. It should not replace your gateway production. It should only be made if you're maxed out and you have a bunch of money you can't spend. It'll help a lot later on dealing with dealing with like run buys and counterattacks and shit like that. But get coins at rally.io. Oh my fucking god, dude! Thank you, rally user, for getting hundred and four dollars in Vibocoin. Vibocoin's blowing up tonight. Jesus! Thank you very much, guys. <coughs> you guys are too awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but the the big thing is what's it called? Uh, you just you really you like you got to be careful about when you when you're taking a fight with your opponent. The last thing in the world you want to have happen is you guys both to like smash to into each other in the middle of the map, and then you both kind of like die off. And your opponent replaces really fast, and you replace nothing because you're currently making a bunch of cannons. When all your gateways are ready to be go, they're, they've been ready to go for a while. So again, static D should only be apparent when you're uh, when you're playing a defensive style, or when you're not able to spend your money because you have too much money, not enough like things. Your army isn't dying so fast that it's not needing to be rebuilt every fucking two seconds. Because if your army is dying that fast, it generally means your opponent is clashing with you with their entire army. They're not spreading themselves out. Uh, and you can always like also warp in units into mineral lines if you have to. If it comes down to that. Like, I could warp in some zealots into, like, my fifth base or fourth base if I had to do that. So we'll see efficiency in this game. So you can see our opponent pushes us to some zerglings, right? It's all good. It's all good. And when that's happening, we still have uh, a seven probe lead, right? Like after all said and done, after all said and done, we still have a nice seven probe lead uh, going on here, which is super fucking nice. And I mean, that's just, that just goes to show that we're, we're, we are at this point in the, at this point in the game, we're playing a little bit more efficient than our opponent, not massively, but a little bit more. It feels good too because we're the ones that are also teching a bit harder than Zerg is. Because Ling Hydra is not as hard of a tech path as Archon Immortal. Archon Immortal is a little bit higher tech value than, than Hydra. <laughs> And that's all we're going for. Same thing as always. Just chilling. Trying to do periodic scouts with our with our sentry. We're trying to also see not only where his bases are, <coughs> but we're trying to get a read on his composition. And we did read Hydras earlier, so we knew he was going for a ground army. We're transferring probes around that are oversaturated. And then this is this is a big point in the game right here. So we talk about how initiation, you want initiation to be a split situation. Like if I actually got a massive concave of zealots on top of these hydras, meanwhile my archons and my immortals were also spread out really nicely to jump on the hydras as well, that would have been super good. That would have been amazing. However, uh, the hydras were going back and forth as well being aggressive. Like he was constantly pushing me and then backing off and then pushing me and then backing off. So if he's going to do that, it's a little harder to... That'll cause a little bit more stress on you to set up an engagement. And if that ends up being the case, if your opponent's constantly shoving you as well, just fucking go for it. Just set it up if you can, like we do this second time. But if your opponent won't let you do that because he's going to shove you as well, just go. And just, just resort back to your macro muscle that you fall into every time. So we just went for it because he's literally going back and, forth with us, back and forth with us over and over and over. And you can see it still went pretty good for us. Regardless, again, because it's because Archon Immortal 
scales better than pure hydra. He even had a better concave there. Because we stood on a ramp that was shit concave. We had the convex. But look at the supply. Even though we're taking big fights here, look at that supply. Coins at rally we're still ahead by 50. Yo, Zamir, thank you for the $104 in Viber Coins as well. God damn. Viber Coin is popping off right now. Thank you very much, dude. Uh, but, like, the reason why we're popping off is because this is what we've done behind this. We have that. We have these Immortals. We have all these Templar. More Zealots as well. We have this massive remaxed army again, ready to go already. Meanwhile, the Zerg is just going pure hydras, which is fine. It's all good. But it it's just don't don't waste time being like I'm fucking around with my army too much. Just make something happen, make a move happen, right? And then finally, this this is the split scenario where we actually take a split a, a divider. Like, we have our, our army split 50-50 to hit two locations, to hit the same location, but from two different sides at once. So we just green box it, grab a chunk, and then go, go up there, guys. And then we go for it, right? We move everything, and now we have this humongous concave that hits this base all at once. So if his army was here as well defending this, it would be, uh... It would be brutal for uh, the Zerg player. Like, that would be a scary-ass army to fight against right away with Protoss. The Zerg actually catches us on the on the hatchery though, but here's the problem for for Zerg now though, is even if he starts killing my army while I'm killing his base, we still take the advantage here, because this economy value is going to do nothing but go up for us and go down for like the difference between the two of us is going to increase every time a base dies. So like right now, if I had to guess, the average for Zerg when this base dies is probably going to be like 2,500 minerals and only like a thousand gas. It's going to dip a little bit, and we're going to maintain. We're not going to dip at all. So the Zerg is going to have a harder time keeping up with our economy. And there you go. 2,500 minerals and about 1,000 gas. No, it's actually 2,300 minerals and about 1,000 gas. So it's it's, it's rough. Uh, like, he can't keep up with it. We're just mining way more than he is now. And now this means that every remax we do is going to be constantly happening when our Zerg opponent doesn't ever max out anymore. Not only that, but the Zerg might die to this as well. Which he did. So, the power pushes, man. It's really all about that macro still. Just make something happen, but definitely don't fuck around when the fight happens and macro as quick as you can. Definitely make sure you macro ASAP. If you heard something right there, I, I'm sorry. My bad. I didn't mean for you to hear anything if you did. I'm trying to look up my MMR and my Terran video right now. Okay, it's 3026. Yeah, that's what our goal is. Thirty twenty six is what we're going for here for uh, plat one. I couldn't remember the number exactly. Let's stack our close patches. And no bow hitter. I see you in the chat. What up, man? GG. Well played. Lings are a bit brutal, but uh, you did a really good job, though. Regardless, like the only the reason why I say lings are brutal is because lings are a unit that if you don't actually play them actively, they're not gonna feel like they're gonna get much done for you. That unit is very fragile otherwise. Good, stack that patch right there, and now we're done. Oh, we need to go scout. My, my bad. Sorry, we'll go scout right now. It's all good. <coughs> okay. Let's get our natural going. 
take our natural right now. Go back and get ready to take our cyber core. Meanwhile, our probe scouting is going to see the Terran's base. Build our core. There we go. Nice. Good shit. Okay, build our gas. He's got one gas and a barracks. Uh, this seems like a command center expand build. Uh, would be my guess. And there's an SCV there. There's a command center. So yeah, it seemed pretty normal from the Terran. Didn't seem too questionable. And a Reaper should be coming to my base. Soon. Like right now. It should be on its way right now. Now, there's some stuff we'll talk about in the future. About clever things Terrans can do. Like put bunkers behind your mineral line. Uh, if he does it this game, all we're going to do is we're going to wait and build a battery. And then deal with it once we have a battery. We'll see if that's what he does though. But for the meantime, let's currently start our stalker. Let's get a pylon over here, just because we're going to need one anyways at some point. And there's the, the Reaper. We can rally my gateway to that Reaper. Spur probe on the middle line that died. Put another probe on the middle line that died. Put another probe on the middle line that died. Put another probe on the middle line that died. We lost three probes to that Reaper, but it's okay. Doesn't really matter that much. It's a, it's annoying, but it's not like, oh my god, we're dead now. Again, that's not the priority. You guys, it blows people's minds when I say that. They're like, how the fuck are you okay with losing three probes? And you just don't care. Because, you know what? My opponent, who gets tunnel vision, and he's like... He's like licking his lips like a fucking snake, killing probe after probe. Probably doesn't mecha very much while he does that. Because people have limited amounts of actions that they could be doing at this level. And if my actions are being invested into just making units, and his actions are being invested into killing units, I'm actually going to end up ahead at the end of that because I can make units faster than a Reaper can kill it when I'm making probes out of Nexuses two at a time. Now watch, here's the Reaper again, right? It's in my base once again. And now, see how we build our base? Well, okay, he went around the bottom. What a genius. He found it. He found an exit. He got he got an out. But cheater. Okay, let's scout the bottom. Have a sentry hallucinate Phoenix and go along the south side. Let's go take another base. Build a Nexus. Let's build another pylon. Let's go back to making our units. Four, five, four, five, four, five. Constantly produced out of that production cycle. What's he got? A tank, and I saw a medevac. Looks super standard. Nothing really weird going on here. Super, super, super standard Terran. Let's get a couple of pylons in my main base so I can expand my reach of my pylon field uh, to like build buildings on. We're just going to saturate our gases now. Get an immortal. And I would say right now, it would be a good time for us to go for upgrades. And why are we going to go for upgrades? Why is it okay to do that right now? It's because our opponent didn't go for aggressive as hell. A build. He didn't go for a super aggressive build. So it means I don't really have the feeling of getting overwhelmed right away. For instance, like the guy we played last game who went lings early. That's aggressive. That's some fucking potential to overwhelm me early. So going upgrades before making gateways is scary. Uh, my probes could all die in my third if I just don't have enough in units there. But this guy's going for an expansion. He's going for defensive tanks. I will gladly go for a council first and you know be happy with that. Make an immortal. And now that we have the council done and we're gonna go into a temple archives, Let's start making zealots and start kind of boosting out uh, upgrades. So we're start what we're starting to do is we're starting to think about how we can deal with a build. How how can we like actually make a good decision logically? And if our opponent's going to play hyper aggressive with units early, well, we should probably defend that with more units, 
But if our opponent's going to play somewhat standard in the middle of the road with a build where it's not going to be extra units fast, where, like, it's not four racks or five racks. Instead, it's a command center with a tank. That's not super aggressive. That's definitely more on the defense. It's also got a bunker. Definitely on the defensive side. So I have no fear and intimidation of being like, well, I'm going to die right now. Which means if I can get these upgrades out faster, I will be the one with power going into the game better because I have, uh, you know, charge lots and, and archons and shit like that, which are super effective in general. Very, very, very good units. And now let's increase our production because we have a really good saturated third base. And we also have a lot of money and a lot of gas. And now we have the ability to bounce between pure mineral, pure gas investments of like Templar and Zealot. So we can very, very easily uh, make that work with our money. Grab some probes off this base and send them up here to this base right here. Okay, this guy's got a third base. Again, another sign of not being aggressive. We can even make some more gateways to be fair. Like another four gates. Our money in our gas is going to start going crazy because now we have a fourth base that's fully saturated. Get our gases going here because again, we have a lot of probes already mining this. It's just long distancing because the base isn't done yet. Let's make that Templar. Grab these gateways we just made. Start 2-2 two -two upgrades. Chrono boost that crap. We can make more Templar. And see how this base is already fully saturated as soon as it's done. We're already at 85 probes. So now let's take another expansion. Go ahead and saturate our gases here for uh, Archon investment. Let's get a bunch of Archons here. <laughs> we can currently start our upgrades again. <laughs> Where's my sentry? Did it? I did not die. Okay, it's right there. Oh, I have a Colossus somehow. Oh, sick. I made a hallucinated Colossus. Did not mean to do that. It's okay though. Make some pylons, because I'm about to supply block. Main base is way oversaturated. Let's transfer to the new base. And because this base is now going to get saturated fast, let's expand again. We're expanding like crazy. Okay, he's attacking us. So let's back up and get my army grouped up right now. And now my army is somewhat grouped up. Now let's go for it. Go towards where he would be pushing me. Did probes just die? Yeah, some probes died. So let's transfer some probes now. Have a, um, my observer follow an immortal. Chrono boost our upgrades. We can make some more gates right now. Or like another robo, maybe like two more gates. Because again, we're... Uh, oh, you know, actually, hold on. We'll make Templars first. Round a Templar. And now we can make more gates. Because we have some insanely fast, efficient income here. Uh, but we don't want it. We definitely still want to prioritize gateway production first over new gateways. Okay, Chrono Boost my upgrades. Uh, and then 3-3 three is about ready to go. Probe count is currently 88. We went a little bit overboard, but it's okay. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world at all. Make another Immortal. Let's make another round of Zealot. There you go, we do made another round of Zealot. We're getting really close to maxing again. And we can make another Immortal over here. Get 3-3. Three, three. Transfer some probes around that are oversaturated. Uh, probes here, good. Every, everywhere else is pretty good. We can take this gas. And why can we do that? Why is it okay to do that now? Because we can make Archons. And it's very gas intensive, very mineral light. And it's okay. It's totally fine to do that. Okay. Chrono Booster upgrades again. And now let's get ready to go attack this bottom, uh, this middle left base right there. So let's go ahead and go do it right now. Move forward. Make another zealot to make to finally max out here. And let's get my army up. We'll send half my army to like right here, and half my army can go like right over here. So we can a move this area right here. And he's, I don't know if he's attacking us right now or not, but yes, he is. So now if he's here, if we're, we don't have to take the fight yet, so he's he, we know he's there. So take my army, green box like half of it. Send half of it over here. We're chilling for a second. Meanwhile, we're on only 14 production buildings. So while we're waiting for the fight to start, make some more gateways. Our army's currently in... in okay, we got a bunch of Widowmites in my middle line. 
So now we're gonna, what are we going to do against that? We'll make some cannons. But don't worry about this yet. Set this up first. A move on the minimap. Shift A move. Grab my observer. Follow an immortal with this bad boy. Go back to my base. Start making cannon battery. Cannon battery. Cannon battery. Units are dead right now. Make a bunch of Templar. Go to this base. Cannon battery. Uh, tosses for noobs, boys. <laughs> and there you go, boys. Yeah, there we go. And now how many production buildings do we got? We're looking at... We have 22 production... Oh, no, more, more than that. We have 23 production buildings. Insta Remax, Insta Remax, Insta Remax, Insta Remax. And what, hap what, was the, what was the game really decided on? This guy doing a fancy Widow Mine drop. He's like, hey, 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 I'm going to drop you with Widow Mines. And then I lose like 12 probes and then I, I fucking run his ass over with an army. <coughs> so again, let's look at this shit, boys. Let's look at this shit right here. This is what the fight actually looked like. So this is when he dropped one of mines in my base, right? You're just like, oh my god. Super annoying. It's currently up to this point in the, t in the game, he's killed 20 probes. But look at this. Even though he's killed 20 probes, I've lost 20 probes. And I'm at 79 versus his 63. So I'm still crushing. We're still crushing that economy. We're still banking like crazy here. Now let's look at this fight. Our opponent has almost half of our, not quite half, but in the realm of almost half of our supply. It's a big ass supply difference right there. And then we go for it right here. Vibe, I give you so much shit, but I just watched the stream I actually hated, so I'm happy to be in your stream. <laughs> Thank you, Gago. Much love, man. Not to sound naggy, but when can we expect Plat to toss and Zerg? I'm all caught up on B2GM and don't know what to do with my life now. I'm making Toss 2 right now. Toss Plat 2 is being made right this second. And Zerg is either going to be made later tonight or maybe tomorrow. I've had massive headaches all week this week. It's been hard to stream. And also, today's my fucking day off, and I decided not to take my day off. Because I missed a day yesterday. Uh, but be patient. I'll get them out. Um, but yeah, right now is or you're watching Platinum 2 Protoss. Uh, and Gecko, I love you, man. Much love. So our opponent fights half our army, right? This isn't even our whole army. It's probably actually like a third of our army because this is a massive chunk of my army right there. And the, the little chunk of my army was able to crush the Terran. And why is that? It's because Archons are fucking good, boys. It's Archons are fucking good. And... Bio is one of those things that's not so good if you don't have enough of it, and also if you don't micro it. And he definitely didn't have enough of it, and he also didn't micro it. So those Archons are just fucking pounding those Marines and mara those Marauders and Ghosts and stuff. Easy fucking peasy. And then he, you know, he got the last word in. It's all good. Uh, but yeah. This is one of those things where if I was coaching this guy, I would say... This guy's trying to play way too fancy. Way too fucking fancy. Uh, like using ghosts, using spellcasters in Platinum League by itself is already hard enough. And then... It, uh... You know, trying to like also execute like widow mine drops and shit, and then like land them out, kill a bunch of probes, lift up your drop again with your widow mine drop, and then fly away. This is very, this is a very fancy, very heavy flare style. Uh, not, uh, not very just like sturdy and solid. So, yeah, it's uh, it's brutal. That's why we ran him over. We are like probably like four wins away from plot one, I think, because I think it's 3026 again, if I, if I remember right. 3026 is going to be plot one, and it looks like MMR is just broken 
or the, the leagues are broken because now it's going to say I'm bronze forever. I don't fucking know what's going on with this game. <laughs> At least MMR still works. But yeah, it's kind of lame. <sighs> yeah. Let's go build our gateway. Let's go scout his base. Right click his mineral line. Card boost our nexus. Let's build our gas. No pressure. Was just curious of the time frame for YouTube. Hope you feel better soon, buddy. Thank you, dude. E5, appreciate it, man. Uh, I don't really have a schedule laid out. I'm just doing it as fast as I can. But also, I'm like, yeah, I, I get a little beta jammed out sometimes. I, I kind of need to take a break sometimes. Because, uh, yeah, I've done this. Like, it's my fourth time doing this. Uh, but I'm trying to make it better as well. It's just, it, 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 people probably won't under understand. It's just, if you make the same content over and over and over, you get kind of exhausted sometimes. All right, so let's take our Nexus. And then let's take our core. And we what did we scout, right? No nexus, double gateway. We scouted aggression. Let's check our base too, because the probe kind of went down here for a little bit. And who knows what he did? Okay, he didn't put a pylon down there. Now, I, I would not ever assume there would be a cannon rush there, but there could be a pylon there that he might warp in uh, something into later, possibly. That could very well be an, have been a possibility. Let's go ahead and chrono boost out our uh, our gateway unit. Chrono boost out a probe. We can make a pylon here to eventually make um, a battery. Get coins at rally.io. Vibu next GME, thank you very much for the 250. <laughs> thank you, dude. Much love. Oh my god. If only, that'd be sick. <laughs> thank you, dude. Okay, now we're making probes. And here's a cool trick, okay? Here's a cool trick I'm going to teach you guys. So if you play against someone who opens up double gateways. I highly recommend, first of all, make a battery because it's going to be aggressive, but I highly recommend leave a probe here just for a little bit. Leave a probe at your ramp. And what we're going to do with it is this probe will build our extra buildings like this, but it'll stay here. And now watch what happens. See how there's two adepts going in my base right now? You see that? Do you fucking see that, guys? Watch this. The next time he comes up my ramp, I build a battery right here. Like this. Build battery. And now I A move him with my probes in this area. Cancel that battery. Go back to mining. Uh, or go back to making probes. And so on and so on. Corona boost our probes again. We can tell our army to go over and attack that because a lot of our units aren't helping anymore. We can go back and mine our, our doorway. So again, that was a mineral, minimal micro engagement. And we just got rid of the, DT, uh, the, of the adepts in a very effective, easy way. For... Platinum League. Again, you can take you can play it a lot better as well because you get higher level, not waste all your probes. But for now, not allowing the adepts to go in your main base is fucking huge. Because you redu you take away all the mobility that the adept has. Okay, now we're going for a scout on his base. Uh with our Phoenix. Let's go ahead and build a couple of stalker. Or I'm blocked for a second. Let's build our nexus. Camera hockey, that nexus. What does he have? 
He's got Robo. He's got Stargate. Okay, so this guy actually has the ability to go for Stargate units. So for now, let's do this. Put three Stalkers in my main mineral lane. And put three Stalkers in my natural mineral lane. And why are we doing this? Because he opened up Stargate. I saw no Robo units, but I saw a Stargate. So this guy is all about harassing probes all day. This guy loves killing probes. Also, him going Adepts as an opener is a sign of somebody who likes to kill probes. So, this will be a game where I will put units in my mineral line so that our probes don't die. And then secondly, this will be a game where we also, once again, go for upgrades before gateways. And why is that? He's expanded. He's not owning me right now. He's, it's not. We're not about to get attacked by a massive, overwhelming amount of shit. Okay, so let's go for upgrades right now. We can do the same thing here. We can put a couple stalkers in the middle line. It makes sense because our opponent's not playing an aggressive style in the form of like a big push. He's playing a style that has no units anymore. Like, he, for instance, he opened up double gateway, and when I scouted his base, we saw zero gateway units and a stargate. So it makes the most sense that he's probably going to attack me with like oracles or something like that. Like, he's going to harass me more. Do we have to leave our units scattered like this all game? Definitely not. Just early game to shut down this aggressive crap. Yeah, let's get a Temple Archives, and now let's start making some more gateways. We'll make units first. Okay, now let's also start making Zealots from this point on. And now let's make a couple of gateways. And look, guys, what, what do you see there? Fucking oracles, right? Do I give a shit? No. Look at him running away. I didn't do a fucking thing. I predicted it, and I reacted to it with a logical insight as to what he's doing. I did nothing with Micro. I broke down his style in a way that made sense. Which was, oh, he's fucking harassing my probes. And now he's not making units behind the adepts that he harassed me with. And now he's making fucking Stargate. Like, that's 100% some dude who's going to try and kill your probes all day. Let's expand again because we're fully saturated. Yep. Card to booster upgrades. We can make some Archons now. We're almost fully saturated there. Uh, he's really working on that base for a little bit. That's totally fine. I don't care. Let's make sure we build some pylons over here. So, because we we don't want to supply block, we can build a couple new pylons over here just to give warpins uh, at it. Okay, keep Chrono boosting upgrades. Make units. Alright. And now, where's my sentry? There you are. Let's make two Phoenix up go at once. Scout the right side, scout the left side. How many bases is this dude on? Transfer probes now to my new base, because again, we're getting really close to full saturation on all probes. We're looking really good on probe count overall. Current boost upgrades. Make a bunch of zealots. Make an immortal in a second. He doesn't have a base there. Doesn't have a base there. There's oracles there again. What's going on here? I'm still making units on four or five, by the way, while I'm looking at his base. I just saw stalkers and immortals. And there's his third. Get coins at rally.io. Yo, thank you very much for the five dollar uh Viber coin. Uh rally user, much love. Thank you, thank you. We can make some more gates. Okay, uh, build some stalkers in this middle line. Just because, again, we don't want it to die. We can even make an Archon or something. Go ahead and build some uh, assimilators. And look at, the, look at the oracles. Leaving my base once again. Do I give a shit? I don't give a shit, guys. You want to know why I don't give a shit? Because I left units in the middle line. If you leave units in the middle line, this guy's fucking around all day with oracles being like, I'm the fucking Star Wars pilot. I'm the, I'm the best pilot you've ever seen. And I'm over here just being like, I'm just hiring a bunch of units to kill you in a second. He's having fun flying at oracle planes over there. And I'm just having fun making an actual army, right? I'm just, I just don't give a shit about what's happening right now. Let's make some more gates. Let's 
take one of these probes and go build another expansion. And now we scouted where his bases were, so let's go ahead and uh, go deal with that. Now, as we leave our bases, this guy's all about using those oracles, right? Let's make, for, just for starters, one cannon per mineral line. And why are we not doing mass cannon battery right now at every base? Because I don't have a ton of money, and I still need to make my production as a priority. Production comes first as a priority over uh, fucking cannon battery. So I just made a bunch more gateways again. Our army is now set up, ready to attack. Let's go ahead and A-move like halfway army over there. Green box a chunk of it. Send the other half over here. And now let's go ahead and A-move into his base. A-move. Shift A-move, shift A-move. Grab my observer. Have it follow an immortal. And now we're super happy. Chrono boost my upgrades. Grab all these buildings we just made. And we're at 20, 21 production buildings. So now we can remax. And now we can make cannon battery at every base. Why? Because now look at our money. It's not going. It's not able to be spent because he's not killing shit. So now I'm, every time I can spend shit, I'm going to. Meanwhile, in the meantime, I'm going to add in a battery and a cannon to every base now. And I'm going to not connect them together to, to make it to where I can't have probes mined properly. Transfer some probes off this base. Make another cannon here. Make a battery. And now every base has cannon, cannon, battery. Fix probes that are oversaturated. Send them to the new base. Make a couple gases there. Start upgrades. Do another round of units. Chrono boost upgrades and chrono boost robos. Make a zealot. Make all these templars into Archon. And our opponent's actually just dead already. But again, it's priorities, right? We're doing priorities. Unit priority is always the, uh, units are always the priority, followed by protecting our base with some static D and stuff like that. Units always take the priority though, every time. If they're never not the priority. We'll make a couple more Archon. Okay, now we're maxed again already. So now what are we going to do? Let's just do this. Here's a cool trick you can do as well. We saw we killed this whole base, so let's go like this. A move his base, grab our observer, have it follow an immortal. Now grab like one zealot and A move the right side of the map. Because we just checked the left side last time we attacked. Now let's check with one zealot on the right side. And I'm just going to see if he has a hidden base over there. And our army is currently going to go kill his main base right now. Let's go and take these gases properly. Let's go ahead and also take another base. <coughs> Let's go ahead and fucking make some more zealot. Shit. Start getting shield upgrades because now we're maxed out on weapons and armor. And look, we found a base. Our zealot found a base. Does he have DTs or something? If he does, it doesn't matter. The ladder is so broken. I defended a drone all enduring placement and it put me in Master League as my worst race, Protoss. I'm normally good. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, I wish I could tell you what's going on, Emperor. Uh, Emperor Keck. Thank you for the five. I'm doing a Bronze Gym series and I'm currently in Platinum 2 on this account and it put me in Bronze 1 again. <laughs> so I don't fucking know, dude. You remember, I'll just say this. Don't worry about the label of your account that much, like what it is with in terms of like your masters or your bronze or whatever because your MMR is still what it's supposed to be. It just means that you have to do a little bit more effort now to understand what your MMR actually represents rather than the game telling it for you. It's annoying. Blizzard needs to fucking fix it. It's super annoying. Uh, it's just like an unnecessary annoyance to have to deal with. But your MMR is not of masters. You're still going to play people who are gold level. I wouldn't worry about it like that. It's not like suddenly it says you're Masters and so now you're only playing Masters level players. Uh, but yeah, anyways, we can back this game up really fast and we can just kind of see, right? Watch, watch the early game. This is where it's huge. Watch the early game. Watch this shit, guys. It's going to be crazy. Pre here's my prediction. He kills like six probes or seven probes. And I'm still ahead by probes. He'll kill six. I'll be ahead by six. That's what my prediction is. Something like that. 
Literally. That's what I feel like is about to happen. And then he's going to try and do more with his oracles. He, he kills, like, no probes with the oracles, really. Will you to be 2 GM on Frost Giant? If Frost Giant is a really good game and I'm really addicted to it, definitely. Yeah, I'll make guides for that game. Uh, but I, if for whatever reason I'm just not into Frost Giant, then no, I wouldn't do it. It depends on how much I... Like, I hope it's a good game. I, I am, I'm consulting with that company as much as possible whenever they... Whenever they reach out to the community and ask for, like, meetings and shit, I always get on top of that every time. Because I like giving the company my opinion about what I think is good in RTS. And it's not just me doing that. There's, like, 30 people in F in, a, in a RTS scene that are doing that as well. So they're getting a lot of community feedback as to what makes a good game. It's, really, it's a really, really good mindset for a company, I think. Okay, so he gets across the map. But thank you for the bits. Oh, wow. Much love, dude. He comes across the map, right? And he's got his adepts over here. He pulls back. Our stalker is kind of just aim moving itself. It's all good. I left the probe here, okay? I left the probe here. And why did I leave a probe here? I left the probe here just for the start of the game. Like, I, I, so basically, think about it like this, okay? Think about it like this. I want you guys to understand this. I'm actually going to back this up because it's super important to understand this concept. Listen. Yo, Sukov. Thank you for the five. Thank you so much for B2GM. It got me to where I am. It is the only reason I beat my kid brother. I smacked that little brat so hard he stopped playing SC. Much <laughs> love. <laughs> is that a good thing? You made him you beat him so hard he you made him quit the game. Uh thank you very much Zukov Saudi for the uh, five dude. <laughs> Congrats on uh Dominating your brother, sh showing him who's boss. Uh, and yeah, if he if you want him to play again, send him my way, and I'll I'll uh, I'll toughen him up for you. <laughs> Thanks, dude. So like right here, this what this now tells us is we go okay. What's the investment? My investment is one gateway. His investment is two gateways. This gateway is his second gateway, and how can we tell that? This one is further along. This one also matches. Our gateway. This one does not match the first gateway, which means he clearly built it a little bit later. If this one is only that far along and this one's this far along, it means that there is about a discrepancy of probably 10 seconds. So we know that he went double gateway one after the other in at somewhat quick fashion. He opened up two gateway aggression, basically. Uh, and from this, from this, here's something important to know. This is something that people freak out on. And if you just understand this concept, it's so much easier not to freak out. <coughs> so a lot of people out there that would have... Li this is why I'm explaining this. is because you remember how I just said against adept openers, you should leave your probe at the doorway for a while at the start of the game. A lot of people would interpret that as like you build your pylon and you fucking leave your probe there. They'd be like, okay, well, uh, vibe said leave a probe there. So that's what I'm doing. I leave my probe at my doorway. That's what I do. But think about it really fast. Think about it. An adept can't be built until you have a cyber core, right? You can't make anything out of the gateway until you have a cyber core other than a zealot. You have to... Uh, you, you have to basically build a cyber core to build anything aggressive here. Now, if that's the case, why would my probe need to sit there if I'm playing a PvP... And we both opened up Pylon Gateway. Pylon Gateway. I can guarantee his gateway is finishing at the same time as my gateway. Oh, because we yeah. both went Pylon Gateway. And what that means is, is that a Cyber Core build time is 36 seconds. So at the very earliest, he's not even going to be able to start Adepts thir until 36 seconds from now. If he starts a, a uh, Cyber Core immediately after the gateway is done. And then that doesn't even include the build time of an adept, and it doesn't even include the time an adept has to now cross the map. So, think about it like this: I come down here, and I build my nexus, and then I quickly right after build my core. Now, because of this, because I went nexus first and then core second, I can already assume that my core is probably only like six seconds behind his. Where am I getting this number from as well? Vibe, how the fuck are you getting that number? Please explain. I don't get it. 
How the fuck do you make that math in your head? How does this make sense? Watch. My gateway finishes at like 124, 125. It's basically done at 125. That's when it finally like warps in completely. Uh, so 125, right? Now let's see when I build my cyber core. I built my cyber core at like 133. Hey dude, I know it's now Protoss, but can you give us quick tip how to deal mass lurkers with Terran? I don't know what league you're in. Also, I don't, it's hard to give you an answer for that. I would say Siege Tanks and Scan overall are a pretty good choice. Uh, Liberators are also a good choice. But if you're in Platinum or below, you shouldn't even be asking how you can deal with Lurkers. It should just literally be you look at the army and you see spikes coming out of the ground and you just scan. That's it. Uh, like, again, people always ask me loaded questions and I have no idea what skill level they are. And I will not answer you with a Master's level answer if you're a fucking Gold League or something because you'll never be able to do it. Uh... If you're platinum below, just scan and stim pack and hope for the best. Cross your fingers. Because it's not about winning the micro. It's about making another army repeatedly. You have to understand that concept. Everybody has to understand that concept. Okay, as we were saying before with this, our gateway finished at like 126, right? I think. or 20, I can't remember. 125, 126. And our core finished at like 133. I think it was 125 was our gateway. So it's like eight seconds. Eight seconds. Also, uh, uh, Natonis, thank you for the five, man. Much love. There's like an eight second difference in the core and in the gateway. I quoted six, and there's an eight second difference. It's very close. You don't have to be exact. You can ballpark it because that's also assuming my opponent might not have built it the millisecond it was done and ready to go. He might have waited for an extra second by running a probe over there to build it afterwards or something like that. Very realistic. Now, let's look at his base. Let's see how close I was. Let's look at his base. I called six seconds. So what does that mean? If I'm already about one second in production on this core, if I look at my opponent's core, it should be at about seven. This is his core. It's at three. So my opponent let his gateway finish and did not build a core at it for five seconds. That is inefficiency. As you can see, his gateway is done. And look at the core. It doesn't start until 1.30 when his gateway was done at 1.26. There's no reason for that. It just, he had the money to do it. He just wasn't doing it. He wasn't on top of it. It happens. People play sloppy all the time. This is pretty fucking standard for Platinum or Below. So the point I'm trying to make here is my opponent does not have a super fast core. If all it took was like eight seconds after my gateway was done to then build my core. My opponent took five seconds after his gateway was done to build his core or whatever again. Four or five seconds. The time discrepancy in our cores is almost identical. So the point I'm trying to make here is if I tell you to leave a probe at your doorway to stop a depth from running in your base, don't fucking do it until your stalker is out of your gateway because you're, because a stalker and an adept have the same build time. Okay? The same build time, 30 seconds each. And how the hell could my opponent already have adepts not only built, but all the way across the map into my base when I haven't even finished my stalker yet? This is something people don't think about in Platinum. They don't actually compare their own build to their opponent's build and understand time. They just think, anything could happen. Fuck, DTs could run into my base right now. I don't know. A mothership could be flying in for all we know. Carriers. He's got carriers already. No, it's, you're limited by time. And your opponent's the same race as you are. So it's very easy to know what time is limited by. And races also, by the way, in this game, they have a lot of similar build times on a lot of things. Like a barracks and a gateway. A, supply, and a, a barracks and a gateway have the same build time and the same cost of uh, how much the building costs. A pylon and a supply depot are, don't have the same build time. It's very close. It's 18 to versus 21 seconds. And then it's the same cost of minerals, though. It's 100 minerals per pylon or depot like there's a lot of similarities and or race to race so again i just want you to understand how to feel confident and what knowing what is capable of what like what can happen to you and now we currently missed out a stalker and now that our stalker is out now would not be a bad time now my stalker has been out for like eight seconds or ten seconds now would not be a bad time to start leaving my probe at the doorway 
just so we could be ready in case this guy chrono boosted the depths as well and ran them across the map as fast as possible. So we're going to start leaving a probe here right about now, as you can see. And look at the adepts. I just put a probe there right now, like at 254. Look where the adepts are. <coughs> They're in the middle of the map. Why are they in the middle of the map? Why are they not closer to my base? Because he didn't chrono boost them. I don't know if he is or isn't going to chrono boost them. And I, all I know is, is that if he did chrono boost them, his adepts would have popped out of the gateway at the same time as my stalker. And my stalker has been out of the gateway now for like 15 seconds at this point. So, or like 20 seconds, like a while. So I know if he's going to, if, if he is going to go adepts, they're on the map and they're getting closer to my base. And the shades are actually, uh, or he, sorry, he doesn't have shades. I thought that was a shade for a second. But yeah, you get the, you get the point. Like, it makes sense to put my probe there right now because my opponent can't do things faster than I can. There's no reason why his Protoss is faster than my Protoss. It's not like he's on crack and he's got, like, fast build times. And now I see the Adept Shades, and what do I do? I, and now he's confirmed by showing me Adepts right there, and he fucked up the micro a little bit. But he tries to go on my main base, and I wall it. I literally put a battery there. I build a shield battery in a wall... Connecting the wall of the top of the cliff there to my core. So you physically cannot walk in and out of that anymore. And it makes the Adepts no longer able to walk out of my base. And then we just A-move him with our army and our probes. And really quickly, before he kills a probe, remember how we said I'm going to be probably six probes ahead before he kills anything? And then after he kills probes, I'll still be like six probes ahead. Watch this. Again, I don't even know these numbers, guys. But I'm assuming. I'm actually uh, seven probes ahead. We are seven probes ahead right now before anything happens. 25 plus 7 is 32. Okay. He's killing probes. So far, I have lost six. The Adept is dead. And I'm still ahead by five. So I was ahead by seven. I lost six. I'm still ahead by five. That's uh, really, 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 really good, right? Super good. Uh, that just makes it so much easier for us to, uh, you know, continue to be in the lead. And how do we know that was going to happen like that? Because we expanded and our, for two reasons. Number one, we expanded and we fucking had more probes to work with faster. And the second reason is, is look at this. This is Platinum League in a nutshell right here. Also, Juan, I can't call you right now, man. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, I'll, I can talk to you later if you want, but I'm making a YouTube video right now. It's a beta gym series oh, video. And I can't really yeah. take a 20-minute detour to talk about relationships in the middle of it. I'm sorry, man. Not right now. Uh, Zealot, thank you for the 12 months. Much love. So watch the probes. Look at the probes. Look at the probes. Watch the probes, guys. These are his nexus. These are his nexus probe is finishing at three minutes and 27 seconds and he's initiating the fight at three minutes and 27 seconds now i want you guys to take a take take note here and look at Vibe. the bottom you know Juan, thank you for the dollar dono dude i can't talk to you right now though man uh i'll talk to you maybe after the stream or something but I, i'm making a youtube video right now and i can't just Stop it for like 20 minutes to talk about random shit. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people will be like, what the fuck? Because this is, again, it's a, it's a YouTube series. So look at, the, look at the Nexus, guys. Look at it. It's already been a few seconds that have gone by. No probes. 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 And right now, you want, I bet your fucking ass he's going to start a probe within one second. You bet your fucking ass he's going to start a probe at 348. Watch. Watch the white box light up in the Nexus now. Right now. Here we go. Okay, well, he's actually taking even longer. And there we go. He starts up probes again. A few seconds later. And how did I... And also, he fucked up the other Nexus, too. He's even hockey to the other Nexus, apparently. And how did I know that was going to happen? How did I know that was going to happen? Because players in Platinum don't fucking multitask. 
they don't multitask. Like it, it's it's hard to multitask in this game. It's not easy. It's not that I'm not saying like you're just stupid or something. I'm like, oh, learn how to multitask, idiot. I'm not saying something like that. I am just saying the way you multitask is when you get so comfortable at macro, you don't even have to think about it. You just fucking do it because your fingers do this. You could be sleeping and fucking building drones and probes and whatever. Wake up and you're like, huh? Oh, I maxed out at seven minutes. Sick. I have super good subconscious macro. That's what you need to do with your macro. Like, that's the level at which you need to you make your macro get to. It needs to become subconscious actions. Like, you don't even have to ad allocate brain power to macro anymore. But players who are not comfortable with their macro, if they're not, if they're, if they're not yet comfortable at all with their macro, and they're, they're just fucking around doing all this crazy shit, like micro-wise, they're going to sacrifice macro to do that because they're not comfortable with anything. They're literally playing StarCraft like it's like balancing 10 eggs on a pencil. And they're like, oh god, everything's falling apart. I can't balance everything. Oh shit. Everything's falling on the ground. Macro more. It's <laughs> the point, again, I'm trying to make here. It's fucking every game. It happens every time. And now you can see, even though I was the one who took a, a worse loss there, that was definitely... A, and here's the thing, right? I'll say it one more time. I say this all the time, but it's very fucking true. If you were a play... If this was a high-level Protoss versus Protoss, if two Adepts killed six probes, the Protoss player who made the Adepts would be so fucking far ahead. He would, he would be running away with this game right now. He would be like, thanks, dude. This is now what I like to call almost a free win. I have such a big advantage now going into the mid game. Fuck yeah. Like I'm now leading the game really hard. But why the hell am I still ahead even though I lost six probes? It's because my opponent doesn't fucking macro properly. There's no reason why I should be ahead right now. If you judge it on the fact that six probes are more value than two adepts, which they definitely are. <laughs> And then we scout his base and see a Stargate with no gateway units when we first got there. Which is definitely suspicious, right? And that's why we're like, this guy's probably going fucking Oracle. Which is why we leave Stalkers in our base. And look what these Oracles do. What do these Oracles do? Watch our opponents. Look at look at this again, dude. Watch our, watch our opponent. Click his fucking Nexus again. Look at his Nexus. And watch his vision. Watch the probes. First Nexus stops building probes at... Six fourteen. Second Nexus stops building probes at six eighteen. Six fourteen and six eighteen. He has not built a single fucking probe. You wanna know why? He's setting up an Oracle attack. He's not building probes. He's not building probes. Six fourteen, six eighteen. Still not building probes. Still not building probes. And now he'll build probes because he's done with the Oracle attack. So watch the or maybe not. Maybe he wants to regroup somewhere else. Still not building probes. Still not building probes. He's putting a fucking time-stopping uh, static field stasis ward at my pylon. And he's he revelated me. You know what this is? A big fucking waste of time. Still not making probes, guys. He hasn't made probes for almost a minute on both Nexus. Look at the worker count right now on top left of the screen. I am now 16 probes ahead. Look at the supply in the top middle of the screen. I am now 30 supply ahead. You know why? Because he fucking flew around the map for a minute with oracles doing jack shit. And now he's killing a pylon. You can't play like this. And he's still fucking looking at the oracles. We're going on almost two minutes soon. This is 90 seconds now. There we go. There's the macro. And now he starts making probes again. 90 seconds after the fact. Or more like 80 seconds. You get the point, though. That's really bad. Guys, it's another example of I have lost seven workers. I have lost seven workers, yet I'm ahead by 18. So if I didn't lose seven workers, I'd be ahead by 25. That's fucked up. That's because my opponent tunnel visions his units and does not macro.
You can't tunnel vision. It'll lose you every game. Like, y you will be forever platinum if you play like this. You have to, honestly, macro. You have to. It's so important. It's mandatory. There's no way around it. At low levels, the players who advance over the other ones are the ones who macro. And at high levels, the players who can multitask better, which means you micro and macro at the same time, will win. You never have a point in the game where you never macro. It doesn't exist. And now here we go again. Fucking, Let's watch it again for just a second. I'm not trying to pick on extreme game over here, but this is a good example of what not to do, honestly. Watch... The triple nexus now. The third one's not going to be done, which is fine. But watch the nexus. Watch the nexus. Look at it. Look at the probes. No probes are being made since 8.19. 8.19, guys. 8 minutes and 19 seconds. And now what's happening? The enemy has discovered us. He scouted... He, like, was distracted by my fucking hallucinated phoenix. Now he's micro his oracles like crazy. He's play he's basically playing Star Wars fucking Battlefront or something. There we go. There's the probes. 819 to 844. From 819 to like 843 or 844. That's another massive chunk of time missed. It's like 24 seconds again, right? 25 seconds. That's a fuckload of time again on both Nexus. That's two probes per Nexus just in that little slot alone. Also, no Chrono Boost at all. You cannot fucking play like this. And you want to know what's going to happen? You want to? I, I guarantee it. My, my opponent queued up three probes for Nexus. That is 36 seconds of probing. 36 seconds of making probes. 12 seconds per probe. And I bet he will micro these oracles for... Uh, now he queued up five. So he full stacked queues in both Nexus. Okay, that's... So so we, we, gotta, we have a full stack of probes. This now means 60 seconds per Nexus. Because 12 times 5 is 60. That's a full minute of probe time in the Nexus now. That's that's 400 minerals tied up in the Nexus per Nexus that is doing nothing because it's literally in queue. Now, is he going to get... Is he going to lose production on, the, on Nexus again while he fucks with these oracles for another minute? I'll times four this shit really fast. Look at the Nexus. They're losing probes. They were at three. Now they're at two. Now they're at one. Now, okay, now he did it. He went back to macro again. But we did just watch him fly around with these oracles for like 30 seconds straight again. It's just, again, if this guy's having fun, he's having fun. If you're having fun, then you're having fun, and it's all good. It's all gravy. But if you're trying to get better at StarCraft, this is an example of what not to do. Because I have done nothing. I have literally done nothing to him. I have only scouted his base with hallucinations and my first probe. That's it. I have not actually attacked his base one time yet. And I'm almost doubling his supply right now. I am literally watching my opponent kill himself. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to think of an analogy here. Like Okay, this is what it would be like. This is what it's like, okay? This is what it's like. Imagine you were in a competition with someone else where the objective was you guys both had to like reach up and grab onto like a, a pull-up bar. And then when you grabbed onto it, like the pull-up bar got raised up in the air a little bit and it elevated your feet off the ground. And the objective was whoever can hang onto the bar longer than the other person wins. That's the objective. And all you do is you get a nice, really firm grasp on the bar and you just hang on as hard as you can. And you just try to keep a firm grip. And you watch your opponent who's just swinging all over the place, like back and forth. He has like this monkey strategy where he's going to swing... To where his body goes like fucking horizontal with the bar and then he swings backwards and then he swings the complete opposite way. So he goes like sideways and sideways and you're just like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And then he falls off the bar within 12 seconds. And you're like, that wasn't that hard. I literally watched him just like eliminate himself. Okay. Because <laughs> he doesn't know what he's fucking doing. He's just being, he's playing chaos craft. He's all over the place. And then here comes our attack. And it's just, it's going to be, again, the situation of a wet noodle. 
It's a wet noodle situation, guys. We're just going to run his ass over because he doesn't have a fucking... Guys, look at this. This is his army. This is what he's going to try and defend his base with. Versus this and this. Fucking four, five stalkers in a century at this point. Yeah, I mean, he does have some voids in the main. Thank God for him, right? But uh, random chaos craft, right? It's just chaos craft. <laughs> chaos craft. <laughs> I love your all these things. It's pretty true, though. Like, I'm, I, don't, I don't even do anything. My opponents literally beat themselves. They literally kill themselves because they don't know how to macro. So I literally aim move them. I don't even try. I, I'm putting zero effort into this attack. I, I went move, move, aim move. Like, well, I have a fucking Archon sitting there. I don't even know that's happening. Why? Because I'm macroing. Look at my supply. It's always maxed because I'm fucking making units the whole time, right? I am macroing. My opponent's not macroing a single thing during this whole fight, which is why he's got a thousand minerals and nothing being built out of any of his buildings. He's currently trying to micro Void Raising and Stalkers, and it doesn't do a thing if he's here or not. It's the same outcome either way. And it's it's not about winning the fight. It's about making consecutive, fight hap consecutive fights happen repeatedly again and again and again and again and again. One army doesn't win the game, but ten armies do. Hello. Hi. Right here. You will never be Sorrel. You are not allowed to harass. Make only workers. B2 GM build only build until O Masters 1. If you never look said at that. your army, you are a bad person. I never said you that. You will never be good enough. I never said Masters 1. I said Diamond 3. We're almost there. I'm going to start microing him Diamond. And guys, the game. I'm just letting you know. Again, I'm going to give you guys the same scale, okay? 10 out of 10 is like... So it's a scale of 1 to 10. 1 is like... Welcome to StarCraft 2. It's your first day playing. 10 is like Serral, for instance. Like you're playing the top level pro gamer. On my scale of what you need to have, just being able to play at a uh, base level diamond uh, macro, just being able to play macro good enough to get in a base level diamond, you're at like a 3. A 3 out of 10. Okay? In terms of difficulty that, or for that, what that is. Alright? And then if you actually go above that, every league you go above that, which so now if you're... No, if Diamond is a 3, Masters is a 4, GM is like a 5, and then Semi-Pro to Pro is like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The level of StarCraft skill is fucking insanely high. And 3 is fucking all the skill it takes to get to, to Diamond if you just macro that's how difficult it really is but the thing is the thing is is if you actually try to micro and do all this crazy chaos crafty stuff in like platinum or gold you're playing gold instead of like at a two you're playing it at like a fucking eight or like a seven and it doesn't have to be that hard and the reason why it's going to feel like an eight or a seven you're gonna be like wow starcraft 2 is a fucking hard game it's because you can't handle anything you're doing. It's it's another example of like, if, if I was, here's, here's one more example, another analogy. If I wanted you to juggle, okay, and I told you to juggle one ball at a time, you would, you would be able to do it. Nine times out of ten, you'd probably be able to throw it up and catch it. Every once in a while, you might throw it a little too far and be like, oh, shit, I dropped it. But you'd probably be able to throw it up and catch it. And if I told you to do two balls at the same time, you'd probably drop one every fucking five seconds and what if what if i told you to fucking juggle seven balls at once and you're can't you can barely handle one properly well you're gonna drop fucking all seven repeatedly and not progress anywhere and that's what people do with fucking starcraft when they make the game like a seven level difficulty at fucking gold or platinum where it's just the game is way harder than it should be for you because it like it's gonna feel like an uphill battle every time if your if your opponent always has 200 supply and you have 110. And why do you have 110? Because you're fucking flying around with oracles like this for 40 seconds. And you're like, I'm I'm literally doing nothing right now, but it's cool.
And now you can see the Archons just bitch slapping these Void Rays, right? Just like, get out of here, Void Rays. <laughs> okay. Hopefully this helps. Another example, guys. Another example. Oh, did I actually get promoted? Is it fixed? Or is it going to say Platinum 2? Silver 1! That's not real. 3026 is what we're looking for. <laughs> In the words of Kendrick Lamar, I was going to kill a couple gamers, but they do it to themselves. Everybody's suicidal. They don't even need my help. Dude, well, the people in StarCraft, man, they literally, like, people in lower level StarCraft, it is the hardest thing to be patient while teaching them. Because you just watch them make the same mistakes 5,000 times. Like, guys, when I when I coach someone, when I coach someone in, like, ma like I, I, again, I'm not saying I hate coaching people at low level. I'm not saying that at all, so don't take it that way. It's just frustrating because you watch them make the same mistake over and over and over. And I, that you have to tell them a million times until they go... Until they themselves have that epiphany and go, holy shit, Macro's actually good. He wasn't joking. No shit, I wasn't joking. So I told you fucking 38 times in the last hour. Come on, bro. What race is this? It's random. Okay, if it's random, just build it at the top of the ramp. It's all good. Build a pile in there. In vibe you coin from rally.io. My god, dude. Vibo next GME. Thank you for the 50 Vibo coin dono, man. Very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Vibe, can you please make a written guide of things you need to consider every minute? I have a video guide, even better. Called B to GM. B to GM, dude. All right, boys, let's fucking do it. Okay, it's Brodos. Cool. Yo, should be to P2S, three. a new spin on the B2GM formula punk champ. He's going to block my gas. See, like, this is another example of my opponent playing more about disrupting me than focusing on himself. He's all about disruption. Do I give a shit? I don't give a fuck. He's got two gateways. Guess what we're going to do? Same thing as last game. Uh, against the player who went double adept opener. You have not enough and now check this out. What am I going to do here? I'm going to build a gas at my natural. And why am I going to do that? Because my opponent blocked my gas in my main. It's okay. Do, do I... Am I freaking out right now? Definitely not. It's totally fine. Block that gas, dude. Block the crap out of that gas to your heart's content. My natural will finish soon enough anyways. Yeah, let's go to boost our stalker. Let's put a probe on that gas. Let's put another two probes on that gas. And that gas is going to be starting to be mining up that base in about 12 seconds. 13 seconds. Let's go ahead and build a battery. And now look at this. Uh... Now my stalker's out, right? So now we probably want to leave uh, a probe in the doorway. We probably want to leave a probe in the doorway because the adepts could be on their way right now. Like, this is very realistic. They, they could definitely be coming fast now. My stalker's been out for like 10 seconds. Adepts might be here in the next like five seconds. It's very realistic because my stalker is out. Let's go ahead and make a quick uh, robo and second gateway. Rally them down to the front of my natural. Keep making probes. We can Chrono Boost the probes as well while we're at it. And then just get ready to build a fucking battery. If he shows up here with his adepts or whatever the fuck he wants to show up with. Oh, he's got two stalkers. Okay, so if he's got two stalkers, you no longer have to leave a probe there. You no longer have to leave a probe there. Now let's send like one stalker back 
to defend my, uh, or to go kill that gas in my base that's blocking my gas so I can eventually take it. And we're good to go. We're good to go. We're about to have two gateways come online in a second here. Let's make a couple more pylons in my base because I'm about to block and I also want to get rid of... My opponent opened up aggressive, right? So I want to get rid of all the fog in my base as fast as possible because what if he flies some shit in my main base? I have no idea. Let's make an immortal. Let's make a couple more stalkers. Once the pylons are done. There we go. Now let's take a third base. Do I know if he's expanded or not yet? I have no idea. It's all good though. Because, I mean, if, if he attacks us, we still have probes that we can use if it comes down to it. Let's make our nexus. Let's make a pylon. Okay, let's build our last two gases because again, we're fully saturated on these bases. We can rally our main nexus to that gas. Maybe build a pylon right there too. Keep building stalkers and let's build a observer now. Because what if this guy goes for some tech build? I have no idea what he's doing, right? We're going to find out soon though, because now we're scouting with Lucinated Phoenix and we're going to actually see if he's scouted. Or, oh, sorry, if he's expanded. Okay, that has three out of three. This one has three out of three. Rallying my nexus down to my third base. Oh, yeah. Let's transfer one probe up to my third base. Make up more stalkers. Make another immortal. And now look what's about to happen. I'm about to see his natural. If there's no fucking base there, I'm making gateways. If there is a base there, I can make upgrades. So there's a base there. And he's making ground units. He's making stalkers. So I'm more than happy to make upgrades right now. Just keep making units. And now that we're going into these upgrades, we'll make our last two stalkers right now. And the next units from now on will start being uh, zealots. Yeah, thank you very much for the sub, Shin Pete. Much appreciated, dude. DTs are incoming. I hope so, because I have a fucking observer. <laughs> I hope they are, because that's a free win right there. You should be making observer every game, either way. That should not be something that we're scared about. I don't think it's DTs, though, by the way. It could have been, but the fact that he expanded and he has a bunch of stalkers now, I highly doubt it's DTs. It's unlikely. Okay, he's pushing this base. So let's A-move it with our whole army. A-move that shit. Chrono boost our upgrades. Okay, he's got disruptors. Let's grab my probes and let's A-move him. It's okay, guys. It's fucking fine. A-move his ass. Keep making probes. If this Nexus dies, rebuild it. Guess what? I'm going to rebuild it immediately. Do I give a flying fudge? about this. Nope. I really don't give one hoot. I've been swearing a lot throughout this video, so I probably should cut back on the swearing a little bit. Sorry, boys. Getting a little excited here. Chrono Booster upgrades. Let's also start making more, a few more gateways. We did just lose our third, which sucks a little bit, but it's okay. Let's just make a few more gateways. It's like three more gates. Because now we're starting to have the Templar archives come online and we can start using gas that way too. And let's even take another Nexus while we make Templar for Archons. And why are we going to do that? Because this base is fully saturated and I want to expand again for that reason. Okay, he's now attacking it again. Let's go ahead and A-move it with our army. Take another Nexus. Okay, he's doing... This guy's all about Disruptor Micro. Incredible booster upgrades again. Transfer some probes onto those gases. Do you see how my opponent is playing so fucking fancy? Another player who's like all about playing fancy as shit. Grab my army and tell it to come back home. Because we don't want it to run off and die by itself. Macro is superior. And again, we're not microing. I am just taking these disruptor shots like to the fucking face over and over and over. And But I don't give a fuck. I don't care one bit. Disruptor shot me again for all I care. Do it again and again and again and again. And why do I not care? Because I got a really good economy. I already have 82 probes, about to be 85, and I'm cranking out units like crazy. I am not fucking around with this dude and wasting time. I'm not wasting time. Mineral 
Okay, so this guy actually killed my uh, my sentry, so let's go ahead and shift A move. Two zealots, one on the top and then one on the bottom of the map. And I just want to see where his bases are. I want to see how much he's expanded. Let's take our gases here. Okay, we're at 85 probes. We're happy, happy, happy on that. Take some more gateways over here in the main base. Transfer some probes off this base. Okay, now he's attacking the, this base up here. Or... Okay, let's just... You guys go kill that. I, fuck it, what, I don't know. It's a random stalker. I think he's scouting me the same way I'm scouting him. I think he's using Beta GM philosophy in his own playstyle of, like, the scouts and shit, which is fine. Let's make some more buildings. Okay, we found a base in top right. And there's Zealot in bottom left. Got all the way to his base. So we know he's got that base. That's his furthest out base. So that's where we're going to go. That's the first base we'll attack when we actually go attack. Where's my robo? I thought I made a robo. Let's make a few more gateways. Maybe this is a dumb question, but if immortals are so good, how come we build so few robo bays? Two to three for eighteen gates, why not more? Because thanks, smile. Because they are bulky, clunky, fat units that will not be efficient if you make too many of them because they don't share surface area very well. You don't. Ha it's like it's not an open sandbox where there's no terrain, right? You're gonna have terrain limitations to where all your mortals can't engage at the same time. Also, if your opponent goes air, mortals can't shoot air. Immortals are good, but you only want to have probably like eight of them. You don't want to have 30 of them. That's overkill, and you'll, like, you won't even allow all of them to engage at the same time. Okay. So, let's get half our army up to the top. Green box, a chunk of my army, and come down to the bottom. Chrono booster upgrades. And now, A move. Shift A move. Shift A move. Shift A move. We just A moved all over the mini map, all over his ass. <coughs> We're at. 15, 15 production buildings, so let's make a few more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> now we're going to be at 22. Actually, no, we have more than that already. What am I doing? I'm now at 23. I forgot to add in these gateways that I just made earlier uh, somewhere else. The other gateways in my main or something. I actually have 24. Uh, we're definitely good. Okay, there we go. Just maxed out again. I'm maxed again. And now, since we're maxed out, we can do this maneuver, where now we have extra money where we can go cannon, cannon, battery. Cannon, cannon, battery. Transfer some probes off. Go down here. Cannon, cannon, battery. Cannon, cannon, battery. Every base is cannon, cannon, battery, except for this one. And cannon, cannon, battery. Good shit. And now, let's take all that money we have that's excess now and make a bunch of Archon. Chrono Booster upgrades again one more time. We can start making a, a couple more immortals. And we're basically maxed again, right? So we're just, we're macroing like gods. We're, we're prioritizing the macro once again. Same thing as always. Transfer some probes over that are bad, set, but poorly saturated. Make a bunch of archons down here. Chrono Booster Upgrades. Chrono Booster Immortals. Chrono Boost out some Zealots. Or, uh, sorry, Warp in some Zealots. We could even take another base. Because this base is fully saturated. So let's go up here and take another base. We're getting attacked right now by a fuckload of Voids. We could honestly do one of two things. We could A-move his base or we could A-move our base. I would say let's just A-move his base. And why is that? Because he's flying over the cliff and I have a bunch of Archons. And they're slow as shit. So let's just go to his base and go kill it. And in the meantime... Let's try to rebuild pylons and shit that die. We could also overcharge that battery to make, try and make this cannon last longer or something. Build pylons, build pylons, build pylons, build pylons. Get a shield upgrade. So he just wanted to attack me with Void Rays. He really wanted to attack me with Void Rays. And it's all good. It's fine. I could just, as soon as I'm no longer supply blocked, I could clearly just make stalkers again or something that can shoot air and I'd be fine. 
another thing about this is is that don't freak out when only 10 void rays are in my base look at the supply in total in the top of the screen right now he's got 10 voids in my base guys he's got 65 supply he's got a fucking problem when i have 29 zealots four immortals and 10 archons in his base i'm gonna kill his base so much faster than he's gonna kill mine like his base is gonna get obliterated in seconds and that is his last base as well. There's no other buildings on the map. So. We had nothing to be afraid of here. And because he's just going to be annoying. And instead of trying to fight my army. He's going for my base all over the place. Just fucking go attack him. Because if we just chase his void rays that have move speed. Uh, running around my base. He's just going to run away from me constantly. And he's going to buy himself a bunch of time. Uh, when at the end of the day. He has to work. And also not only this. But I only have to work through two bases. His natural and his main, and he's dead. He has to work through my main, my natural, my third, my fourth, my fifth, and my sixth. He has to work through six bases, and I have to work through one. Not only that, but I can also continuously base trade and rotate probes around and take another base, and another base, and another base. I can just keep expanding. Do whatever the hell I want, right? <coughs> All right, let's see this. Same thing again. Go, go fast. We're going to go fast through this one and just look at supply on top and shit like that. So our opponent opened up double gate again, like the last guy. And then he goes for a core. And he's not making probes. And there we go. Now he's making probes. Like, look at the probe count already. Guys. I don't even have a fucking natural yet. And I'm already ahead by five workers. This is not a problem of like how this guy should have microed better or things like that. It's literally, I just fucking macroed efficient and my opponent didn't. I'm already ahead. Five workers in the first two minutes of the game is, that's a big deal. And that's because this Nexus was just idle. It's because he was doing shit like, I'm going to steal your gas. <laughs> I'm going to mine from that gas. Fuck your gas, vibe. Yeah, what are you going to do now that you lost four gas? Huh? It's just, it's just people fucking around, doing weird shit. You have to play efficient. <laughs> Look at the worker count, guys. No one has lost a probe yet. Or actually, I killed one probe because he left the probe in my base. The probe that was stealing my fucking gas. My stalker killed that probe. So he's lost one probe and he's behind by 12. You will never pace with a diamond player if you play like this. Can you show how many ahead of him you have harvested? What does that even mean? I don't know what you mean by that. I am currently now 19 probes ahead. I don't know what you mean by how many ahead of him I have harvested. Uh, 19 probe lead. It adds up over time because think about this. Every minute, this is increasing in difference. Uh, if, if we were to if we were to maintain from six minutes to seven minutes with where we're at right now, oh, I would already be mining eight hundred yeah. more minerals than him and three hundred more gas than him a minute. G G Vibu, you're doing lovely work. Thank you, DeFraze. Much love, man. And now, what was his goal? Right? What's his goal? His goal is to get juicy disruptor shots. He probably just got off of a mechanic stream. <laughs> And he's like, my boy McCanning hits those fat director shots. My turn. And although he might have had a lot of fun, right? Again, if you want to, if this is how you have fun in StarCraft, I can't fault you. It's a fucking video game. Have fun. If you want to just have fun, have fun. Vibe show how many more resources more you have made. Okay, Mr. Wuta, there's no graph for that. Those are things that I average and I estimate. And if you want me to estimate that for you, at this point, at this point, at six minutes into the game, I would say I have probably mined a total of like 14,000 resources. If I had to guess. And my opponent has probably mined about 8K or like nine, probably 9K. Probably 9K up to this point. But he's hitting rupture shots, guys. Five stalkers are about to explode. Right? That's juicy. That feels good. 
But think about it like this. Even though he killed five stalkers with a disruptor shot, I still have a supply lead of 23. That's fucking a lot. That's a lot of supply lead right there. Even though I just lost 10 supply and stalkers, I am still ahead by 23 supply, which means I was ahead by 33 supply a second ago. See what I mean by you're making the game harder for yourself? If you just macro like shit? And look what happened when the Nexus died. Instantly rebuilt. Did I fuck around and wait forever? No, I rebuilt it right away. I'm not wasting time. And now I'm maintaining almost a 40 supply lead. And here we go. That's the second round, right? That's the second round. You're like, ooh, damn. He's baiting me with that. Like, he's setting up a plan. He's got one stalker poking the Nexus because he's trying to bait me forward so that they can blow up my army again with another disruptor shot. And he does. <laughs> Blows up another. How many stalkers die here? Four stalkers instantly die to another disruptor shot. This guy probably feels like King Dick. This guy probably, the second he got that first disruptor shot, his dick literally just somehow flopped over the edge of the chair. And then the second time he got a disruptor shot, he, he just heard a thump on the ground. He's like, oh, yeah. I'm a fucking beast. <laughs> but does it matter? He's still maintaining a 30 supply deficit after blowing up my stalkers again. Doesn't fucking matter at all. Look at these immortals. They're just like, we're going to pound you. We don't give a shit. And now we have a situation of the Protoss player who's barely setting up his third base. And I'm setting up my fourth base. These are problems. Zalabar, uh, thank you for the five. Not so fast, Twitch chat. You heard Vibe you. We've got adventures to go on Twitch chat. Just you and me, and sometimes Zerg, and sometimes Protoss, but never Terran. Ooh. You want to know why Twitch chat? Because Terran crossed me. I understand. I feel you. Thank you very much, Zalabar, for the five. Hey, I'm, I'm a big fan of Protoss and Zerg as well. Zerg number one in my heart. Protoss close number two. And now again we're supply we're maintaining a 40 supply lead. 40 supply lead, guys. Now we're maintaining a 50 supply lead. It just gets more extreme by the second. And why did how like if, if you're like vibe, again I don't understand. How do you keep getting supply faster than he does? Because I'm mining more than he is the entire game. At this point now, at, at 10 minutes, Chogler, thank you for the 100 bits, man. Much love. At 10 minutes now, I've probably mined about 24,000 resources. Or like 23,000 resources. And my opponent has probably mined about 14,000. What I also mined, or like maybe like 15K. Pretty much what I mined like three minutes ago. Or like two minutes ago. Like we are crushing his mining. And now we're maxed. And this is another wet noodle situation. Every player that just gets run over by the first max out is a wet noodle that has weak macro. There is no reason that this should run you over. Like, is this is I'm not, is this bad for Platinum League? Definitely not. Obviously, the way we're playing is very good for Platinum. But I think every Platinum player is capable of doing this. And how do I know that? I've already seen like a third of my opponents play like this. Like one third of my opponents on average, or maybe like a fourth of my opponents do B2G and builds against me as well. And they put up so much more of a fight than players who do random chaotic shit like this. Now what, look what the fight's going to look like. This is the wet noodle engagement, right? And I know where his base is because a zealot scouted it. I know this is where he's located because a zealot literally saw it going down. So I went, cool. This is where we're going. I'm going to have half my army go here, half my army go here. Big ass concave attack. And this is wet noodle versus a fucking bear <laughs> or like a, a panther or like a, a mountain lion or what, you know, something, a lion, something that's strong in the jungle, in the wild. It's going to be uh, brutal. And here we go. This is what the fight looks like, right? We now a move him, a move the fight. And we got 
Look at that. It's a little tiny blue army. And there's a massive red army. Already this army alone would win. Not even to mention this army over here would also fuck him up pretty bad. <coughs> I do enjoy how space hicks with guns and drugs can hold their own against the most advanced alien race in the galaxy and a perfectly evolved hive mind of super predators. Yo, Shin Pete, they give him three. Terran, baby. Terran. Ter Terran's just another word for Texas. We got guns. And that's yeah, just too much. Like, even if even if I can't hit air right now, I can't even attack these void rays. Does it matter? His supply is dropping faster than mine is. My supply is going up. His supply is just going down. Because if he tries to go back up again, like, he's actually going up a little bit. Props then for macroing for a second there. But it's like, at what cost, though? Because his base is getting run, run the fuck over right now pretty hard by my, our army. And we're still maxed out. And I'm not micring this at all. And now they're, the base is now compromised, right? Now all the probes are dying. Now the supply drops even more. And our supply maxes out again. It just stays maxed out all day. And now we also have static D at every base because this dude's going air. And we're just playing it safe because we easily had enough money to max out again. So now it's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll end you now with 10 Void Rays and see, hopefully I can win. And it'll never work, right? It'll fucking never work against players who can macro because he's hoping to God that I'm also on, like, two bases and I just I just all-end him and he actually defended it. That's the only way this would work. But I didn't all-end him. This is round number two. And you know what's going to happen behind round number two? Round number three. And you want to you know what will happen behind round number three? Round number four. And you want to know what's going to happen behind round number four? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Repeated fucking attacks that never end until this map is dried up like a little raisin and it just doesn't have any more resources left over at all. <coughs> and yeah, he's, he's dead. He has no defense. He's super dead. Which one is it going to promote us to this time? Cold one. Okay, so what we got to get one more win. <clears throat> and hopefully it puts us in the right league. I'm glad it's fixing itself. I'm glad it's fixing itself. Because if it wasn't, that would be kind of lame. I, did, I was hoping it wasn't going to be bronze one the entire time we're going to do the rest of the series. Is this the same guy we just played? I can't remember who we just played, but it's another random player. It's all good, though. Random is whatever. Doesn't matter. Don't be afraid of random, guys. We still scout. Just open up as you do against Protoss if it's random. Okay, well, unfortunately... Like, when I say open up as you do against Protoss, what I mean by that is build your wall here. Like, build your pylon there. Like we do against Protoss. So that... I didn't mean to pull that probe. Uh, so that we can put a gateway and a, and a core, like... Uh, you know, right there and right there. Because what will happen is, it, here's what will happen. This is actually a, uh, this is actually an important tip I'll I'll give you. Okay, I will actually give you this tip. This is important to know. If we build our gateway and we scout across the map, and this our opponent is random, if you build your core like that against Terran and Protoss, that is not ideal. And the reason why is because Archons can no longer fit through that doorway. If it is a one grid spot, see how the green box there is a one grid spot? It's just one grid spot of green. Archons can't fit through that. That's a bad wall against uh, Terran and, and Protoss because you want to be able to make Archons fit through. That's a good wall against Zerg though. But look at this. Look at the beautiful thing. Our probe gets to his base before the gateway is done and we confirm he's Terran. So before the gateway is done means I haven't made my core yet. Because the core is the tech path. So if this was Zerg, I could build my core like this. And we'd be happy. And now I could put like a stalker right there and I'd be good to go. And I could slowly take my natural. Or I would I would have my natural already started. Because it would be really like this. I would still go Nexus first. And then I could make my core. And I could eventually have my stalker guarding here in case we get attacked. And then working my way down to take my natural wall. Against Zerg. Not ideal, but again, it was random. We didn't know what he was. But if he's Terran or Protoss and you confirm that right before your gateway is done... 
Instead of building your, your core right there, you build it right there. So again, what this does is it allows you to do the shield battery trick we talked about uh, against the depths. It also allows Archons to walk up and down your ramp at will. And you don't have to worry about your Archons getting stuck in your base or stuck on either side. Much more convenient. You only want tight walls against Zerg. That way Zerglings can't flood into your base. All right, I think that's going to be uh, that's gonna be it. Let's see if it actually puts us in plat too. Or plat one, rather. Sorry. Yeah, plat one's correct. Plat one is correct because we, we were in plat two and now we're plat one. So hell yeah. Fuck yeah, my, my, the promotions are fixed. I know we got promoted a bunch during that video. But it's because ladder, uh, it, we just got, we started a brand new season. So there was a reset of uh, your league. Your MMR is still there, but your league got reset. Uh, and now it's fixed. So fuck yeah. We're back in plat one. Things are looking as normal now. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this video was informative to you. I hope it made a lot of sense. We're almost in the Diamond League. We're one promotion away from starting to micro. So your macro better be fucking sh sh slick. In the words of a thane. A thane. Better be sh slick. Sh I fucking... Old Athene was fucking hilarious, dude. Uh, but yeah, no, your macro better be good. If your macro is not good, you, you're going to have a bad time in Diamond League. And But don't worry. Just take more time to work on it. Fix your fucking macro. Make it better. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be having one more round of practice with our macro. And then we'll be going into diamond. So I'll see you guys then in Platinum 1. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out, everybody. See you next time. Take it easy. Much love. And uh, yeah, peace.